We are live. We're live. We're live and back from the weekend, ready to carpe diem. Seize the day. And what a weekend it was. I hope you had a great weekend as well. We want to talk about it. We want to hear how your weekend went and how we get a good week started. Let's get it started. How does that song go? Let's, Let's get, get it started. started. Ha! Let's get yeah. it started. In here. Yeah. Let's that. get it started. My mouth so good is not ready to come to work. We're going to. Good morning, my name is Brian McNeil. And I am Lisa Santiago McNeil. And thank you for joining us on our show, Let's Talk About It. We come to each Monday through Friday right here on the SIBN Network, on iHeartRadio, YouTube, TuneIn, as well as Facebook Live. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, like, 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 like. Good morning, good morning, good morning, <laughs> like, 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 like. Isn't that what you got? No, but I know which one she has, but yeah. Oh, I am glad to be in the house today. I'm glad to be here as well. I'm hoping you had a great weekend. Uh, the I'm, mouth says more. It doesn't work at all. I just said that. How about that? <coughs> and this one you just bought, or one you found it's in the, the house? The one I just bought. Dang. Hey, Shaki. Good morning, Shaki. How you doing? Guess who's back? <laughs> Shaki, did you have a good weekend? This weekend we did a thing. We live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and all my children. And all my grandchildren are in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is about two and a half hours drive away. And um, this weekend, we went to um, uh, went to Raleigh. We spent the weekend in Raleigh. We had a hotel room. Now, I've got a bunch of children, okay? And I've got um, six grandchildren, okay? One grandchild here in Charlotte and all the other five are in Raleigh, five granddaughters. So pretty much every month, I got somebody's birthday, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Every time I turn around, it's one of my kids' birthday, okay? And I got three younger sisters. So between my kids and my sisters and my mom, every month has got some. Oh, Lord. Move that thing out the way. Thank you. Okay, somebody's birthday every month. But anyway, so this weekend, I went to Raleigh with my wife, and uh, my middle son came down from Maryland. He lives up in Maryland. He came down, and I got a chance to be with all my children, save for one. One child was missing, and that was Adira. Um, she was in Greensboro. She didn't make it down on Saturday. But everybody else was there. I got a chance to hang out with my first and second born. I got a chance to hang out with five of my grown children. And because um, I got six grown children, if you count my 19-year-old as grown, because he's my youngest, I also have a 22-year-old son. His birthday is actually tomorrow. He'll be 22. So pretty much every week I got somebody's birthday. But I really enjoyed the children. I really enjoyed my family this weekend, two and a half hours away. It was. It, it, it never seems like two and a half hours away. To me, it always sounds like, it seemed like four hours away. But anyway, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. We did have a lot of family time. Uh, very rambunctious grand. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> grand babies are the best. Rambunctious is gentle because they like to play. And they want to play with Pawpaw. And they want to play with whomever's around, you know, so because they got stories to tell and they want to play with you and they want you to play with their toys and they want to show you all their stuff too. <laughs> Everything. Oh, it was great. It was. Um, so after enjoying my children all day Saturday and, and uh, most oh, mostly all day Saturday, um, Sunday on our way back, we had an opportunity to pick up my mother and my youngest sister and Lisa and I, we took them to, to brunch. And that was really, really nice, too. So um, because I live away from all of them, you know, a couple hours away, um, I don't see them as much as I would want to. But when I do get a chance to get back with my family, it's just a great time. Uh, sister, That's right. It was like a family reunion. <laughs> yeah. Sister Shaki says, the family reunion, LOL. That is good. I had a good weekend, too. So yeah. what was good about your weekend? Tell us. We want to celebrate it with you. Good morning, Dr. Beverly. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Absolutely. I had a chance to really just um, regroup as much as possible. Good morning, um, 
Dr. Beverly says, beautiful family, Brian, Kate, McNeil, and Lisa Santiago McNeil. They are beautiful. They're beautiful. They're healthy. They're smart. And they're funny. Oh, we had a piano recital. Yes, from my five-year-old granddaughter. She um, she really did her thing. She did. <laughs> she did. I was impressed with her because she's learning to play the piano. And she did a song. Now, she's not a, a, she knows simple stuff on the piano. So she played her simple notes and she sang her song and she took it serious because she wanted to, us to all to sit down and listen to her recital. And we got a recital from my, my granddaughter, Summer. Yes. And it was great. And a lot of you guys, um, especially if um, Dr. Beverly is going to definitely know and Melissa Price, but a lot of you guys were part of this show when Summer was born. And how excited we were five years ago when someone was born. And I'm showing all those pictures. Yes. And we got to see Violet, um, Violet Sky, Sky yes. for the first time since she's been born. Remember, she was a pandemic baby. Right, right. So and her mom is very, very careful with yeah. people around the baby. She's a little bit, she's a she's about uh, one and three quarters, but she seemed like a three-year-old. <laughs> Uh, she's walking and she's she's not Smiling. talking with words, but she is articulating definitely what she wants. So it was really interesting to to be bossed around by this um, by this baby. <laughs> it was really nice. It was really nice. Shaki says her youngest child is a homebody. I got her out of the house and we got some playtime in. Amen. Had a lunch with a friend and got some chill, got in some chill time. Amen. That is nice. You know, mom and her child just out of the house and getting some chill time together. That is so nice. Um, so that's, I even got a chance to, it was such a full weekend for me, baby, because I got a chance to love on my children and be loved on by my children. And I got a chance to minister to my children and talk to them about what's going on individually as I had moments to, you know, breakfast with this one, a car ride with that one. You know, just talking to them, even though it was a lot of stuff going on, we still had enough time to be, I had enough time to be dad, you know, and that felt good. Absolutely. That felt good. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm, um, Dr. Beverly says her weekend was full of learning how to make candles. Girl, like, did you see all the pictures of stuff she posted or what she built and put together? That was very impressive to me, Dr. Beverly. She said, everyone says they look like candy. Don't want them to be mistaken for that. Well, if they was mistaken for a candy, that mistake will only be for a moment. Because okay? <laughs> one bite, they'll know. Good morning, um, Chef Rev. Good morning, a.k.a. Mr. George Allen. I hope you had a great weekend as well. This was uh, uh, one of the best weekends for me. I'm glad. This is one of the best weekends for me, man. It was full. It was full. Um, and even though it was a lot of driving, I didn't, I didn't get home exhausted. Because sometimes when I go there and come back, by the time I come home, my legs are beat up and I'm just exhausted. But it wasn't that bad this time. And I got a chance to have a great cigar when I got home um, and my own comfort in my own bed. You know, that was just, he didn't have the cigar in his bed. No, I didn't have the cigar in the bed, but I got a chance to sleep in my own bed. Mm -hmm. No matter what happens, you know, my own bed is my own bed. So, <laughs> um what else was so amazing about the weekend for me? Oh, this weekend was also, I got to tell you, very physical. Very physical. My middle child, who's turning 22, he's big. He's big and strong, big chest, big arms. And he wanted to wrestle his dad. Okay. I tried to tell him, y'all. Now, I am very strong. I know I'm very strong. I've always been very physically strong. And he's pretty strong, too. So we're in a room together. The room has two beds in it. And um, he come at your boy. So I grab him and I tackle him onto the bed and I try to hold him down. It was like, I mean, my chest. I thought they were going to break the bed. We were damn near broke the bed, moved furniture in a hotel room. Lisa was there. Lisa tried to record it or whatever she did. She didn't get to catch it all. But it was really, really physical. And I still feel it in my chest today. So <laughs> then after that was over, he couldn't get up. Okay. Um, a little while later, now he's got 22 year old energy. I got 54 year old energy. I'm done. He wanted to come at it again. He came over and pushed me. I'm like, all right, boy, boom, here we go again, wrestling. Me and a 22 year old boy, 54 year old man, 20 year old boy, big guys, big strong guys wrestling in a hotel room. Too Are you much. kidding me? It was too much for me, too. So physically, I mean, I'm, I'm doing everything. It, was, it took all I had 
strength wise to do anything, just not to embarrass myself. And he, this time he was able to physically push me up and get up from the from the tackle. The other time he couldn't. So I'm worn out from that. So then when we go from the hotel room over to my daughter, my oldest daughter's house, firstborn, her birthday is May 21st of this month. So I've got two children birthdays in May. You go to Brianna's house and um, we're having fun with the kids and here comes Zion again. Dad, let's go. Let's arm wrestle. Now, he really wanted to arm wrestle me because he remembers the last time he arm wrestled me, I did this move on him. I was like, okay, let's go ahead and arm wrestle. Okay. So then Mark said, let's go. And I didn't move my arm. I just, and, I, and he was struggling. He goes, I said, go ahead, man, take it serious. I'm playing with him psychologically. He couldn't move me physically because I was stronger than him. I was like, well, if you're not going to take it serious, then I took him down. Now, he was a much younger man then, and I was much stronger than him then. I can't do it like that now, but I did. So, but I didn't take him all the way down. That's the secret. I just didn't let him move me. So I said, on your market set, go. And he couldn't move me again. He couldn't do it. It was just frustrating him so much. Now he's 22 year old. He couldn't move his dad. He got up from the chair like, wow, dad is so strong. And then my um, second son, um, Das, he's he's he'll be 30. He'll be 30 uh, in July. Good morning, Jacqueline. I can definitely see your um, post. She said, palm tree morning, on, almost 10 minutes to get on. I'm hoping you see this. We do see we it. We do see it. Okay. So now my son, my son is turning 30. He's stronger than his dad. So when we arm wrestled, he was able to pin me. So then my youngest son wanted to go. He's left-handed, strong left hand. wanted to go left-handed with me. And he's gotten much stronger, too, <laughs> with his left hand. And I think he actually beat me left-handed, my weak hand versus his strong hand. But all this physical stuff I'll never get to do until I get around my – now, one more thing. I'm, I know I'm dominating the conversation, but I appreciate. I apologize for that. When I get around my boys, I get competitive. Okay. I mean, anything. We can have a push up competition. We go out to the basketball court. My juices flow when I get around my boys. If I was around them more, I'd be more, I'd have more injuries. Okay. <laughs> Brianna's quite competitive as my well. My daughter as well. You oh my don't god. Don't let him let her get in on it because she's a girl. She wants to slap, but she's good at it, actually. Mm -hmm. She wants to slap box us and I used to love a slap box for a little while, but I was like, nah, that's too much. Dad's end up hurting her. I'll end up hurting her because she wants to win. She's just not playing. She's trying to. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where does that girl get that from? Shefra says that weekend, the weekend was full of West Charlotte Senior High School Pride Day. Whoop, whoop. I was able to see people that I haven't seen in 30 years. How cool is that? How cool is that? You get to see the. The cute girl that's now the big as a house. You get to see the ones that, did, that played you back then. Now they want to get with you. You get to see the people <laughs> perpetrating. <laughs> uh, Dr. Beverly says, Lisa, I have to brag on you for a few minutes. You look absolutely beautiful in that sun-kissed golden yellow. Mm -hmm. Your beauty is not just skin deep. It's a diva fashion for you. You're the greatest. You're the thank greatest. You. Dr. Beverly, thank you for saying so. What a nice thing to say. What a Isn't that nice? It is very, very nice. nice thing to say. And I love yellow. I would have a whole wardrobe of yellow, but I can't find it. <laughs> Lisa did uh, score some some skorts, right? Mm -hmm. This weekend, so she bought some shorts, skirt, skirt shorts, whatever. That's what it is. Yes, they're very cute. I think I got about four of them. She did get four of them. So then they rock because she's got great legs too. So um, one of the other things too about driving from. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you said it. <laughs> uh, Shaki says, "Oh Lord, not not that is a big as not that big as the house, <laughs> cold as ice bread." Yeah. <laughs> you know what it's like when you go to your reunion. Come on, man, you hear the stories and you see. It's always that one thing, you know, the girl that you wanted or the boy that you wanted back then that would give you no time, but life has happened. Life has happened. Maybe a whole lot of life. They've been through some things. <laughs> There's some changes. And now they want you. Bill Too late. is on the road. He says, happy today. Today we are on the road. Woo, woo, woo. And Bill, what day are you coming through, Charlotte? Remind the me. Seven. The 7th. The 7th? That's not far? That's no. Far. It's this week. And we are going to be so excited when Bill comes through Charlotte, y'all. We're going to make sure we share him with you because we are blessed to be able to host him and his lovely wife in our home. We're looking so we're so looking forward to that, Bill. I'm excited. 
I'm excited. I'm excited. Yes, yes, I am. So with all, and now driving from Charlotte, North Carolina to Raleigh and back for most of the trip, you were on um, 85 South. Okay, 85 South from um, or 85 North, going from Charlotte to Raleigh, and right about the midway point, there's this place called J and R Cigars. Okay, about right at midway point, J and R Cigars, and it's a good place to stop and take a break. And I use that as an excuse to go to that that big cigar outlet. It's a cigar outlet. I use it as an excuse to take a break and to drive. So I was in there, and they've remodeled it, J and R Cigars, and it's right in um, Burlington. North Carolina. They remodeled it? Yeah, they remodeled it, made it easier to find stuff. They used to have like big shelves. You had to kind of like walk around and see stuff, but now they got everything lowered and you can kind of find things easier. Oh, it doesn't have any decor. They obviously had a man remodel it for fun. Did you go inside? Yeah. When did you go inside? It don't look like nothing. I went inside to use the bathroom. No, you didn't go into the cigar outlet. You went inside JR's, but you didn't go in the cigar, the humidor side. Because I didn't see you in there. No, maybe not. But yeah, you didn't. It's didn't. still warehousey. Well, it is because it used to be out the retail outlet, but it's not anymore. Now it's just the cigars and cigar cigarettes things. But anyway, um, and I was in there and I was shopping around looking for cool stuff. And I like to talk to people that work there. And they were able to recommend this lady recommend. Have you ever tried? Um, oh man, uh, something mac macanudo, um, a bourbon macanudo, a bourbon macanudo. Just the name sounds sexy to me. Bourbon Mac and Noodle, I don't think I have. Show me. And she took me over and saw me this, showed me this sexy little cigar called a Bourbon Mac and Noodle. And I bought two of them, okay? Because I had never seen them before. So I bought two of them on the way there. But on the way back, I'm like, when am I going to come this way again? So we stopped off there again. I got two more of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> So hey, I, KT. Good morning. How was your weekend? How was your weekend, Katura? I had a great weekend. And and then we want to talk about how was your weekend, but we also want to talk about let's get this week started. <clears throat> I got up at like 625, 630, something like that, because it felt, to me, it felt later than 630. Yeah, I got up at five and then went back to sleep, but I couldn't, the, the time was really all off. Mm-hmm. But this is the first Monday in May. Today's the second. Today's the first Monday in May. The first Monday of any month is an amazing Monday. The first Monday of any month, you are supposed to set your goals for this month. Not last month, for this month. This morning, I got up, went over to my laptop, and I tallied everything from the last month, okay? I, I, I checked and I counted how much money I made how many presentations I gave, um, all those things. I did my tallies this morning. That way I can no notice it, celebrate it, and move on from it. Because now I get to erase all that stuff because it's a brand new month. Today is a day that you have never seen before. Mm -hmm. You've never been this old before. You've never had this collection of wisdom before. So my challenge to you is to use your collected wisdoms that you've gained up until today to ensure you have a great week. What have you learned over time that you can use to have a great week? Today's the first Monday of the month. New goals for this month, flush out last month. Last month ended um, Sunday. Absolutely. Now, Sunday, and in, in actually, actually last night in preparation for today, I began to um, prepare for this week this month, even this day. Um, I got my uh, mindfulness cards out. I put out my mantras. I sat there and I reflected on them. Then I actually created them uh, by hand again in my pretty little journal. I'm not going to share with you until next week. My pretty little notebook um, and pen, I scribed them over and over again because I thought about when we were kids and we had to do like um, practice your spelling words and all those things, you were told to read them and write them over and over and over again um, before the tests, before, you know, weekly to remember your spelling words, all of those things. And I'm like, you know what? I need to remind myself of these things again. Um, 
So I wrote them down in my own handwriting. I wrote them down in the present as in <clears throat> I am. And then I wrote them down as if I was being told them by somebody else. You, you are. are. You are. You are. You are. And um, then I went to sleep with me and Shaki's favorite song. It's going to be a good day. That's yes, y'all jam. It's going to be a good well, day. I know. It's I'm going to tell you, she did day. go to song to sleep with that because she was saying it out loud as she went to bed. <laughs> Uh, Katura Green said it was awesome, and I'm exhausted. Oh weekend. my goodness! Then she was in um, uh, she was out of town at a dance conference, I believe, right? I think so. At least last week, I don't know about on um, the weekend, but um, Jacqueline says, Brian, I love hearing about your time with family. Use the weekend to send ten more packages of cards. Wow, Brian, I only have yours to complete, and my <sighs> first fruit offering will be done. Weekend concluded in resting. And, and relaxing. relaxing my creative brain cells. So, Jacqueline, you have been teasing me about my cards for weeks, and the anticipation. I'm gonna wait because I know what I know what cards we have in the home right now. Okay, and they're freaking gorgeous. Um, it's, don't even try. It's gonna be impossible to do, but you cannot top what we already have here. It's not possible. But to I be better than no, she can't. Those things are freaking gorgeous. Yeah, but they are tailored to me. Okay. Tailored to me. <laughs> They're still beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Sister Jacqueline also says, by the way, Lisa, thanks for sharing your special hug moment. It left me powerful with you. Prayerful with you. Oh prayerful my with you, excuse me. So I shared. Oh, yeah, like, I watched that video. You too. did watch I did it. Watch oh it. my God. It was the most amazing moment. I did watch it. And so um I made a video on Saturday. I actually went to Walmart, and typically going to Walmart doesn't the whole story. doesn't really end up being as um, as good as it was. I went to look for clothes, and usually when I get there, my size they don't have, or my style they don't have. And I actually got there and found both. I found something in my size and something in my style. Well, then the next drudgery comes because you find out that you work for Walmart, right? You, normally you go to the front, there's no registers open, and now they don't even have, they actually usually have a line even at the self-serve. So you're not going to get out of there quickly usually. Which I can't stand. So I got up to the front and lo and behold, the line, the register was open and it was another register next to my open register with another person at it, but it only had one person in the line, one family. So I rushed up to the front, I put my stuff on the conveyor belt and then I started um, getting my stuff ready for checkout. And this little girl that was in the, not, the line next to me with her father and her brother actually tapped me on the shoulder and she said, hi, may I give you a hug? And it was the sweetest hug she gave me. This, oh, she just hugged me so sweet. And then she said to me, um, who's your hero? My dad's my hero. And I had been just been thinking about my husband because he's been really, really great over the last couple of days. And I said, actually, my husband is my hero. And she said, what's your favorite color? And she really went on. but. But the moment was beautiful in that she was so loving, so sincere. She had the most beautiful blue eyes and she was pure. All I could think about was this was an angel that God sent to come and give me this hug. Well, after her father finally wrangled her away <laughs> and took her out of the store, it left me full. Like I'm standing at the register in my mask with tears pouring down my face, trying to pay for my stuff, make it to the car, sit down. And I just had to record it and share it because it was so beautiful. And my number one prayer of that moment was that God keeps her safe and keeps her protected because she's so pure. Her intention was pure. I could see how it could be taken advantage of. And I just hope that he keeps a holy hedge of protection around her and her family. And I just thank God for choosing me to give me that. It was like butterfly kisses. Even though she didn't kiss me, it was just a hug. But that's what it seemed like when something It's an amazing like moment. It's an amazing moment. So much had to happen for that moment to exist. Because um, Lisa never goes to Walmart, ever. 
Okay, but I, I don't think she's been there in months. But she went this Saturday morning, okay, before our trip. Um, and that little girl saw enough of Lisa to feel that she was approachable enough. I mean, the kid was over 10. She was about 12. She was about 12. She was about 12. So she knows that some people are not to be messed with. She knows some people can't be approached. So and she did ask me, um, but I do believe that she had a certain level of special needs. But um, I still appreciate it. And I looked when she asked me, I looked over at her father to get a tertiary approval because, you know, you don't want to hug somebody's child without their permission. But a little girl saw you and decided that woman. Excuse me. Can I give you a hug? Are you kidding me? Uh, Shaki says, oh, that would have had me in tears, too. It does now. Um, I am so mushy these days. <laughs> I am a mushy mess, honey. Uh, mess. Brother Mark Greer says, good morning, folks. Today is full of magnificent things, one of which is you. Let this day find you showing the world power, the power, the beauty, and the blessing of your magnificence. And good morning to you as well, Dr. Deborah Dunstan. Sister Jacqueline Dun Rosie says, I barely got through the first time I heard the hug story. That's a great hug story. We're going to keep telling that story. Mm -hmm. I can feel the moment. Truly a good encounter. Were you able to get a name? She never gave me her name. She never told me her name. Because she wants to keep her in prayer. That's why. Yeah. I, I call her my blue-eyed angel. Um, I just decided that. And the reason why I say I, I believe that she has some type of special needs and the reason I was very specific about not saying disability she has a different ability, and she was operating in her purpose because that's what I felt. She, her purpose was to bring me that hug. That's what her purpose was. But um, she had headphones on, like uh, to block out noise, and um, she was very, very talkative and joyful. So I really appreciated her. I appreciate that her father gave her enough of a reign to be herself, but he was enough attentive to make sure that she didn't get into harm's way. Or offend you. Oh, yes. he. Well, I had to help him wrangle her away because he was ready to go probably like three hugs <laughs> in. But um, but it, it was a really beautiful moment. It was Amen. a really beautiful moment. Amen. That's beautiful. Um, and I'm glad. I'm, we're going to keep telling that story now. That's now. Sister, Sister Jacqueline gave it the title. It's called The, the Hug, Hug Story. story. <laughs> so uh, we're going to keep telling the hug story. It's a part of who we are as an empowerment duo. That's who we are, the empowerment duo. Our focus, and Lisa and I, we've evolved this uh, purpose over the years, okay? But we believe our focus and what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to so be in support of entrepreneurs. We're supposed to be in support of entrepreneurs, help them to publish, help them becoming recognized authorities and helping them, them to sell and prosper with their current collection of gift skills and talents. That's what we're supposed to do. And okay. you know what I realize even more so, and I often find myself dimini diminishing its importance, but I, I'm going to do better with that. Your spiritual mindset is critically important to every element of your success. Now, it's not your branding. It's not even your sales. It's not your books. It's not your writing. It's not your training. It's your mindset. If you can control what you believe in, on, and about yourself and the things that you are uniquely purposed to do, you will accomplish them. Whereas I don't care what level of training you have in whatever it is that you do, if you do not have your faith in yourself, your mindset in your success, your, your mindset in your resiliency, you will not have success. It's an anchor. If, unless you can get your mind right, it's like trying to run with a heavy anchor. You know, it's really difficult to do. Okay, damn near impossible. Good morning, Felicia. Jacqueline says, good. Blue-eyed angel. That's what I will use. God already knows. Thank you again for sharing. sharing. Yes, Absolutely. yes, yes. Um, you know, it's so beautiful. The story is beautiful. But uh, I'm telling you, my weekend was so physical. I can feel it in my arms right now, biceps, and in my chest. 
<laughs> right now, I got a, a real workout like I ain't had in a while. I got up this morning. I did my 30 minutes workout. Um, I took an extra 30 minutes sleeping because that waking up at four o'clock in the morning broke my rest. So I didn't get up at seven like I normally do. Um, but I still got up and went downstairs and got on the treadmill. And I'm grateful of that. Um, Dr. Beverly says, get your crown focused and breathe in good energy and release negative patterns. Um, Dr. Beverly, we got to, if people want to look at your stuff or whatever, because your stuff, when you choose, when you choose to post it, it's so cool looking to me. Okay. So we need to find a way for people to find you, you know? So anyway, because I like you, I like your stuff, her, her, her oils, her soaps, her candles. I like them. Uh, Shaki says it, and it isn't about the surface mindset. It is the deeper things and you can tell where they are. If you look at areas in your life, you may feel stuck or like you aren't where you want to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have really been doing that self-reflection because right now it's, it, it's, it has to be the focus of my Attention, I'm asking God to give complete and, co complete and total restoration of uh, the energies that may have been affected from not feeling well, but while at the same time believing and knowing that um, he will restore everything that the moth and the canker worm have eaten. That's, um, we get reminded of that. Lisa is still healing from her sickness. She's not completely healed yet. You know, we're still going through some things. We still got doctor's visits, but she is healing. Uh, Sister Jacqueline Rosier says, Papa B had a love workout. Awesome. Yeah, a <laughs> love workout. Let's live my boys. Sister Felicia says, You're absolutely correct, Lisa. You can have all the skills in the world, but if you don't utilize those skills that yield results, all you got is just idle skills serving no purpose. Your mindset must be a mindset to keep you motivated and determined to succeed. And Dr. Absolutely. Deborah Dustin says, Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He you will. know, um, back on. Uh, he what, will give you beauty for, beauty for ashes. What Shaki and Felicia and what Lisa are saying, um, you could have every skill and, and resource, but if your mind ain't right, it's not going to work. I equate it to the New York Giants have um, a bad quarterback right now. His name is Daniel Jones. He sucks. Don't okay. say that about the man. He sucks. He's terrible. And he, awesome. he's been the quarterback for us since two 2019. We drafted him. And I was so disappointed that we drafted him number six overall. But for three years, they've refused to bring in any competition for him. He's been the starting quarterback. Now, they this past season – they fired the general manager. They fired the coach. They fired the offensive coordinator. They fired defensive. Lost the defensive coordinator. They got a whole new coaching staff and a whole new management team. And the whole new coaching staff and the whole new management team are experienced. They're real smart men. They built other teams before, and they've done a lot of hard work. And they've done very good work. They brought in good players. They brought in good coaches. Other good coaches. I hope he gets a mindset coach. And um, because I don't like the energy that you sent him. Let me finish. Okay. okay. So they did all this stuff. They built a new offensive line. They built a great defensive line. Now we've gotten everything, but the most important position is the quarterback. Mm -hmm. And the way I equate this is the quarterback is the mindset. Mm -hmm. You can have the physically strong body, the gift, skills, and talents, but if the mindset is not right. If the mm -hmm. quarterback's not right. It's going to all be for naught. It's going to have very little difference. Mm -hmm. So until we get the quarterback right, until we get the mindset right, the quarterback of our own bodies, our mindsets, until we get that right, the the, the physical, the the, the skill set, the branding, all that stuff does not matter until you get that right. And that's why I'm a New York Giants fan. Um, I've been staunch and saying, look, this we've had three years of this, okay? And they've refused to replace them. So that means we're going to get one more season of him as the quarterback. And this is going to be really, really challenging because they've gotten everything else right except for that. Well, let's pray for him specifically. Pray for him, pray for his mind. I want him gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you love that team. I do. And you love, yeah, like you love that team no matter what. So just like 
um, we used to do, when we used to do Ambassadors for Christ, we used to go out into the neighborhoods and the, um, the elders, if you will, the older ladies, they couldn't go out and walk the neighborhoods with us. And we didn't realize that the job that they had, because they still came to church and we're like, why are y'all coming to church? Y'all can't come and walk the neighborhoods with us. Their job was to pray for us when we went out there, that we wouldn't find any homes that were dangerous, that we would be well received, that everybody would return back safe and that we would have planted the seeds that we were supposed to plant. And at that age and at that time, it was only 10 years ago, we didn't realize the value of what they were doing, the importance of what they were doing. I'm grateful that they did because they came in at the same time we did. They were in that circle just like we were. And they, you know, they were there when we came back. But their job while we were gone was to intercede for the success of the mission. They would meet at a centralized location like the church. We met at the church. And then some would walk the neighborhoods and others would stay. Yes. Okay. The elders would stay. The elders would the stay. The elders or you know, otherwise not mobile enough to come along with us. Sister they Jacqueline says, yes, Lisa. I know you are continuing to manifest the healing you are walking out. That is why I just just sent you your first wellness gift from me called Focus. Sent info in your Facebook messenger message inbox. Whoa, Sister Jacqueline, you're an angel. You're an angel too. I look forward to checking that out. Dr. Deborah Dunson says, Brian, that's good. Thinking of the mindset as a quarterback, it has to be right in order for things to run as smoothly. That's Absolutely. Right. Felicia says, I battle daily to keep my mindset where it needs to be, prosperous in my daily tasks. I wake up winning no matter what because I know losing is not an option I can afford. God is definitely my source of strength. Amen. Um. The battle daily to keep my mindset where it needs to be. The battle daily to keep my mindset where it needs to be. Um, I'm going to rephrase it a little bit, but you have to keep feeding. You got to feed and nourish your positive mindset because, and we've said it on this show, I'm sure, a hundred times. The negative influences come to you unbidden. You do not have to look for negative influences, but you do have to look for positive influences. You do have to, on purpose, read something, listen to something, be around something that's going to be positive. If you didn't do what Felicia is talking about doing daily, if you didn't do that, you would just get more and more negative. You get more and more negative because you're going to keep getting a bombardment, a bombardment of negative influence. So the only way to battle it, this is where battle works, is to keep putting in positive. Thank you, my sister. Absolutely. And what you what you feed grows. What you feed gets strengthened. And what you water gets green. <laughs> it's greener on the other side of the fence. That's because they water their grass. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I am excited um, about the new month. I'm excited about uh, the I'm excited about the um the new client that I have. I'm excited about her. She's actually one of the youngest clients that I've ever had. And oh, I'm excited about- One of the youngest clients you ever had? Mm -hmm. How old is this girl? Like a fetus? Because you no, had some I young clients. one of. Okay. Because <laughs> you had some I young had clients. I had a nine-year-old author right. before. Yes, I know. She's no, she's an old, she's a teenager. Um, she's 17. I'm looking forward to it. She's fleshing out her, um, her, her book of poetry, and we are going to be meeting today. Now, that 17-year-old, I mean, 17 year old Lisa's working in concert with that child's parents, okay? It wasn't just Lisa negotiate with a 17-year-old. No. The parents are involved, and the parents are paying for it, okay? So we're not charging the kid, okay? Yes, Sister Alicia Gardner says, yes, they water their grass. Good one, Brian. That's right. I noticed um, when I used to take care of my own grass, I don't do it anymore. My grass is green or not green or dark green in direct proportion how much water I give it. If I'm giving it a lot of water, the grass is going to be very, very green. If I'm not giving it any water, it's not going to be as nearly as green. Jacqueline said, you guys are causing me to remember the book I read years ago uh, by Joyce Meyer. The Battlefield of the Mind. It's a great book. Yeah, I read Every book chapter book. of that book is great. Mm -hmm. um, the Battlefield of the Mind, it helped me a lot. It's a great book. It should be one of those required reading books. I have Absolutely. read it as well. Um, Dr. Deborah says, this week has its challenges for me, 
So I'm intentionally feeding my mind with positive things. Amen. Amen. Everybody Absolutely. lift up Dr. Deborah. She is, she's about to make a major transition, a major move. One of the most stressful things and the list of things that we could do is moving. That's one of the most stressful things. And moving out of the, the same city, it makes it even more stressful. Moving out of the same state, moving out of the state that you're moving into another state makes it even more stressful. So this is a time for Dr. Deborah. We need, we need to pray for her peace. We need to pray for her patience. We need to pray for her clarity of mind and her mindset. Yes, we do. Absolutely. I had the opportunity of having a wonderful visit with Dr. Deborah on Friday. Oh, my. With, they had themselves a time. <laughs> we had a visit. It was very nice. Um, it was very, very nice. We Dr. Deborah came over to the house. Thank you very much for that. Yes. And I mean, we touched on every subject possible. Really? Upside, downside, around side. We came around to everything. And, you know, it was just really good to have the interaction together and to be uh, to have some girl time. I don't always get that. Um, Notice what she said. Have some girl time. At first, I was sitting down there with them. OK. Maybe 10 minutes. That's all it took. Maybe 10 minutes. But then we start talking about stuff like, oh, I'm out. <laughs> Dr. Deborah says, I love that time together. We didn't even turn the television on. No, no. they did it. They just sat in the living room. <laughs> just sat there and talked. And, they and laughed. I went outside and had me a cigar. I think I might have even had two. I'm not even sure. But I had the time because they were enjoying each other. That was beautiful. Yes. One more bit of information from Jacqueline. Everyone, please continue to hydrate. to hydrate those brain cells. We got to stay hydrated. Let's talk about that for water. just a moment. Uh, there's one over here. Hydrating those brain cells. There's one. Okay. Hydrating those brain cells. I'm going to take a sip before you do. So we, if you have lipstick on, I don't have to wear lipstick. Mm. I had water this morning. So I, um, because according to savers that we was doing, water wakes your body up. It wakes up your muscles and, and organs. So when you want to wake up, you should drink water. I did. That was the first thing that I did. Mm -hmm. Woke up. All right. So now it's 942. You know what we do at 944 and 4142. We like to thank our consistent contributors. People who have chosen just to speak up and say hi or, or contribute to the conversation in some kind of a way. We like to thank people that have been rocking with us for years. And the way we do that is with greeting songs and with the greeting logos. Absolutely. And uh, we did it Friday. That means Saturday, Sunday. I mean, two whole days that we haven't had a chance to do these jams, but we're about to do them now. What's the last comment? Dr. Deborah says, I'm going to take myself out on Friday, May 6th, so I'm not sitting up in this house just being mad. What? Yeah, well, you are. We're, no, we're going out on Thursday. And Who's going out on Thursday? Uh, I am. I invited Dr. Deborah to come with me. Okay. And Stephanie is going with me. On and Thursday, yeah. May 5th. May 5th, I am speaking at um, the Global Gathering mm -hmm. that evening. So you're not going to be here for my talk? All no, right. that was why I scheduled you for that talk. Oh, that's right. That's right. And uh, Dr. Beverly says, I'm working on a gallon a day. Drinking a gallon of water a day, what will that do for your skin? What will that do for your organs? What will that do for your hair? Drinking a gallon of water a day. Absolutely. I got a haircut on um, Friday. On Friday. And I'm glad that um, I got the haircut done, but I have cowlicks and sometimes my cowlicks trip up the barber and he got tripped up this time. He took out all of this hair. This was not supposed to be cut, but it'll grow back. Okay. Dr. Deborah says she's going to take herself out on Friday. Um, if you want to just take yourself out, that's fine, but you probably got friends that'd be willing to hang with you. Okay. Um, Dr. Beverly says, y'all pray for me. Wednesday is my back procedure and nerve therapy. Absolutely. A back procedure and nerve therapy for Dr. Beverly this Wednesday. You know what time Wednesday particularly? Um, but we got people on here that pray. So Absolutely. we're going to do that. We will definitely pray. I think Shaki was up first. I think so. I'm yeah. having a bit of challenge because my mouse is not mousy. Going to go buy another one. That's all it is. Um, I think I might have a mouse in my office. Thank you. Guess who's back? Back, back. Shaki's back. Back, back. <laughs> Shockey's back, Shockey's back, Shockey's back, Shockey's back, Shockey's back. 
Good morning, Shaki. How you doing? Good morning. Yes, who's back? Back again. Dr. Beverly Thomas is here. Dr. Beverly is on the show. Good morning, Dr. Beverly. How you doing? And according to Jacqueline. Jacqueline <laughs> Rosie, pretty little one that I adore. You're the only one my heart beats for. I'm so glad that you are mine. Good morning, Sister Jacqueline Rosier, another one of our loving, loving people that wonderfully contributes to the show. Uh, I got great new clients. Lisa mentioned her new clients. I got a new client on Friday as well. And uh, we're getting it in today. We're getting it in today. We can't, I, can't I have wait. to get in your office early because you, you need yes, to yes. send out some um, stuff. Some recordings. Could you do that right away, please? I think so. Because uh, it's, it's urgent. Okay, uh, Mr. George Allen, a.k.a. Chef Rev, is here. He's got a jam, too, and it goes, why must I eat like that? Why not hire Chef Rev? He puts the good food in me. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Last week when we ended the show uh, Friday, Sister Melissa Price was fiending for some Chef Rev ribs. I hope that she did get up with you. Uh, Mr. William Brown is here. Um <laughs> Good morning to our friend Bill. Nobody thinks like him still. We love him so, and, and we Bill. always will. Our, our friend, friend Bill. Bill. Good morning to our friend Bill. And I can't wait to see you. I'm going to give Bill a hug when I see him. When I saw my son that lives in Maryland, I don't get to see nearly often enough. I greeted him because he's a big, strong guy. I greeted him with a big, strong hug, and, and, I, and I kissed him on the cheek, and you would have thought I stabbed him, okay? <laughs> because, oh, we don't do that, Dad. I'm too old for that now, Dad. Dad, we don't kiss. I said, you're my boy. I, kiss, I can't kiss my own son on the cheek? No, Dad, you can't kiss me on the cheek. Oh, he wouldn't let it go either. Goodness gracious. And so I had a, oh, or I could threaten to kiss him every time I wanted to mess with him. Uh, Katura Green has a jam as well. And it goes, back to life, back to Katura Green. However do you want it, however. However do you need it. Do you need it. <laughs> Good morning to you. Uh, Brother Mark Greer has a jam as well. And his jam is, <clears throat> so wide you can't get around it. So low you can't get under it. So high. You can't get over it. Mark Greer is under a groove. He's getting down just for the fuck of it. Mark Greer is under a groove. Nothing can stop us now. Good morning, Mark Greer. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night at the men's meeting. Dr. Deborah's up, honey. Dr. Deborah, nonprofit strategist and funding coach. Mm -hmm. Dr. Deborah has some cool a cool post talking about um something she was doing with nonprofits or preparing people for nonprofits. I can't remember off the top of my head. I just remember I looked at the post and I thought it was pretty cool with information that you were putting out. Absolutely. Nonprofit Nugget with Dr. Deborah on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Check it out. Check it, check it out. Check it out. Hey Felicia. Felicia. We love you. You're the one, the, the one, one for me. me. Good morning, Miss Felicia. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm trying to get uh, this thing without the mouse is up there. Okay. But anyway, what we're doing is our greeting songs and our greeting logos. We'd like to thank people like you guys. Um, I think that's everybody. I think that we got everybody. That has a Oh, Melissa Price Melissa came in the room. Is on. Melissa, did you get you some ribs this weekend? Because you were talking about it on Friday. I remember. Yes, Shaki. When is tomorrow? When men is tomorrow at 7 p.m. It is the virtual win and men. You can go to womenempowermentnetworks.com and register womenempowermentnetworks.com and register. <laughs> William Brown says, thanks for the warning. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, Felicia Garda says, sending healing prayers your way. Thank you very much. On the first and the third Tuesday of each calendar month, the first Tuesday of each calendar month and the third Tuesday of each calendar month is when we have male empowerment networks and women empowerment networks. 
and it falls every other week most of the time, but probably four or five months out of the year, there's an extra week because there's five weeks in a year. There's five and weeks in months. that month. Yeah. So it seems like it's spaced out. But whenever that happens, that just happens. But only on the first and the third Tuesdays when we have these meetings. That's right. That's um, right. Melissa Price. Bam, 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 bam. Melissa's home. Now it's time for us to sing her song. Melissa's home. Good morning, Miss Melissa Price. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I just want to say, Melissa has been added to the docket. She will be one of the speakers at the Empowerment Authors Showcase on the 15th. You should have started seeing some of the authors have already started sharing their um their reminders that they'll be out there. Melissa said, I didn't get the ribs this weekend. I'm actually turning tuning, tuning in, in from, from the bathroom, bathroom floor, floor today. today. I'm feeling deathly oh, ill, oh, fevered all night and all day. And as of today, now I'm getting some waves of nausea and feeling like passing out. Lord. Can y'all lift up a prayer? Absolutely. Okay. Right now, God, we ask you to put your holy head of protection in your Prayers of he we're placing prayers of healing that Melissa received that prayer. Your word says that by his stripes you are healed, meaning that healing is already and must just be received. So right now we are standing together firmly as we receive the healing for Melissa. That whatever it is that has upset her stomach or her body and got her not feeling well, that it be rejected and that it be rejected by the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. We thank you for sharing her with us and we thank you for sending our love to her. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Bill is also praying for you, Melissa. And we're grateful in advance for this complete healing. Um, I know nausea because I'm allergic to things. And <laughs> I notice when I'm feeling terrible like that, and I vomit it up. I get it up out of my body. My body's completely rejected it. I noticed that after I clean my mouth out, I feel much better. Okay, because I had to get that up and out of me. So I think nausea is um uh God's be, way of expelling impurities. From and I think body. about Lisa's great talk she did last month, the purpose of pain. The purpose of pain, that pain is an indicator. That pain is teaching us something or reminding us something or giving us a chance to get rid of something. And when I get nauseous, that gives my body a chance to get rid of something that it does not want in there. We got to go. It's 952. It's 952. Everyone is sending you love and light. She said, thank you so much. I've got Sophie home recovering from a cold and I'm feeling beyond incompetent and being being able to take care of her today, too. I'm grateful because right now the most thing that she needs is rest. So, Melissa, Dr. Deborah says, Melissa, if you need anything, I can come to you this afternoon. Amen. And it sounds like she needs some help. Um, Dr. Deborah, she says she's feeling incompetent and she's trying to take care of the baby, Sophia, Sophie and herself. and herself. So it sounds like she does need help right now is what it sounds like to me. We love you all and we mm. certainly thank you all for your prayers as we touch the creed together. And it is Monday after the after the show. Make sure don't forget to have some. Melissa Price says, thank Dr. 